Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. How's everyone doing? Um, my name is Jen. Uh, for those who haven't been here before, I, I am part of Sky Scanners social team. So I'm here to talk to you and bring in the wonderful people for our fifth Instagram live. And um, today we're going to be talking about what it's like to travel with a wheelchair, um, as long along with accessible travel. So um, if we've got a few question box down there, if you've got anything you want to know, we'll pop them in. We'll make sure to have a little Q and A session at the end. Um, I'm going to be joined today by the wonderful Breaking the Distance and Curb Free Corey. Uh, I'm going to attempt to get them in here. It never goes to plan, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so in the meantime, if you can let me know where you're all from and how you're doing today, that'd be great. Thank you. I'm accepting. There we go. It's going, it's going, it's going so well. Oh. <laughs> hey, hello. We've got one. That's a good start. Hello. <laughs> Hey! Oh, <laughs> um, oh hey, this hi, we're all here! Perfect. 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 Cool, amazing. So, we've got everyone here. Up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that works wonderfully. Thank you so much. Cool. And um, so, as I mentioned, hello, I'm Jen. I'm going to be in the background. I'm going to do as little talking as possible. And it's all about about this lot today. Um, so, if you've got any questions, pop them into the box. I'll be keeping an eye on them. Um, if they're in the chat box, I'll take a wee note. If you can't find the Q and A box, don't worry about that. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand over to the wonderful breaking the distance. Take a wee hello. Look. We should probably introduce ourselves yes. just in case people who don't know us. So I'm Tash and I am from the UK, I'm British. I am Martha and I live now in the UK but I'm from Holland and my pronouns are she, her, she, her also. I'm really excited to talk to Corey today. Hi Corey. Hey, it's so good to meet you both. It's so good to meet you. Where are you based Corey, just for our audience? I am in the state of Georgia in the US, um, so I'm near Atlanta, if you've heard of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we're actually going to hand over to you and allow yourself to do a bit of introduction and explain to our viewers who you are, what you do. Uh, don't forget to plug your Instagram as well. <laughs> uh, for sure, yeah. So I am a Corey Lee. I am an accessible travel blogger and content creator. I started a blog called Curb Free with Corey Lee back in late 2013, so a little over eight years ago. And on my blog, I show wheelchair users how to travel, where to travel, and most importantly, why travel as someone with a disability that uses a wheelchair. So it's been a really incredible journey so far. I've been really fortunate to visit 39 countries and wow. all seven continents in my journey. So it's been a whirlwind, but so much fun. Oh, that's amazing. And what made you decide to uh, go like public with your journey, make an Instagram and a blog? Yeah, so I was um, actually researching for a trip to Australia when I started the blog and I got online and started like trying to find wheelchair accessible attractions, hotels, transportation, all of the details that go into planning a trip as a wheelchair user. And when I did that, I realized that there just wasn't a lot of information out there on the internet about accessible travel. And so that really got me thinking, you know, there needs to be a website out there and a resource for wheelchair users where they can just go online, figure out what's accessible, what places can they visit. And so that's where the idea was born. Um, and then the very next day after having that realization is when I launched my blog. Wow. wow. You're one of these people, I teach so many people that are like, I'm thinking about starting a blog and I just don't know <laughs> what to do. And you're the people that's like, the next day I started it, I had the idea and yeah. I just got it done. I love that. That's oh yeah, there's, like, there's no, no better time than the present. It's so, so true. I yeah. love that. That's a brilliant thing. Amazing. Um, so what is it that you yourself love about traveling? Ah, oh, I mean, so many things. We could talk about that all day, probably, <laughs> um, as I'm sure the two of you can as well. But um, yes. I, I, the number one thing that I really love is just being able to meet other wheelchair users around the world and hearing about what their experiences are like. I mean, I've met wheelchair users 
and Morocco and India and these like, and Buenos Aires, Argentina, I mean, all around the world and just hearing about their experiences of growing up within those places is so vastly different than mine, you know, as a wheelchair user growing up here in the US. And so I think travel has really shown me, you know, how privileged I am in a way to be able to have things like, you know, laws in place that do have some degree of accessibility. I mean, here in the US, the ADA, the Americans mm -hmm. with Disabilities Act, it was signed in 1990, which is, which is the year that I was born. So um, it is older and it definitely needs an update. Um, but at least, you know, there are some regulations in place for accessibility. So um, it's really been a, a learning curve. And I think that, you know, when we're traveling, the most important thing is just to have an open mind and be willing to learn. It's so true. It's really interesting. Um, every time we, we speak to different travelers about how travel allows you to find your tribe mm -hmm. wherever they yeah. are. So for us, you know, we really connect with other queer folk around the world. And that's kind of like our sort of like real impetus. And we were speaking, um, you know, last time around solo female traveling and it's about finding like other solo female travelers. So it's really interesting that travel is a way to connect to that personal tribe, mm. but yeah. in other places and, and to hear different experiences. Yeah, and Absolutely. I think it's, it's so inspiring what you do. And, and I'm just uh, really curious, what are your uh, top tips for traveling with a disability? Yeah, I mean, I think the number one thing I would say is just to plan ahead. I mean, I think that, you know, the further in advance that you can start planning a trip, the better it's going to actually go once you're there in a destination. So I'll usually start planning a trip like up to a year or two years in advance, even, wow. just to be able to, you know, research more and figure out what's accessible, what can I do once I get there, because I mean, then once I'm there, I'm able to just have a really good experience instead of like stressing over accessibility while I'm there. So I think uh, the most important thing is just to plan ahead and have a lot of patience also, I think. So, you know, I think with any of us, I'm sure the two of you as well, things are always going to go wrong on any trip. I mean, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it, do, it doesn't matter how much you plan, how much time you put into it something is going to happen on the trip and you're going to like have a bit of a freak out. But I think that's like the joy of travel is like in that moment, just being able to have patience and know that like, okay, this is bad right now, but it's going to get better. Like it's all worth it in the end. And just, you know, constantly keeping in mind how worth it the journey is. Mm. And with that, when you say about the planning side of things, like I know for us when we travel, we have like a rough idea of in terms of location, but we don't yep. necessarily specifically plan the places that we're going to stay in. So i.e. every single hotel and wherever else. Do Does your planning ahead go into like that much detail if you know exactly how many nights you're staying in this hotel, which hotel it is, et cetera, et cetera? Or do you still have room to kind of have a little bit of flexibility when you arrive um, to kind of, I guess, scout out and see see what's around? Yeah, I mean, I do book every hotel like way before I go on the trip. So yeah. I always know exactly where I'm going to be staying because I mean, with, when I'm booking a hotel, I usually need to be able to like call the hotel, figure out exactly how accessible it is. Yeah. So just like showing up in the destination, you know, and asking them there, it would be a very difficult process. Yeah. But uh, so I do usually plan that out. But I also try to have, I mean, some level of flexibility and yes. spontaneity. I think is I think spontaneity is super fun. I mean, for all of us. So I do like some degree of that as far as like, I mean, choosing what attractions to go to or what beach to visit that day, but always keeping an idea of, you know, at least like 10 accessible things that I can do yeah. within the destination and that I really want to do. Yeah. And then just like dividing that time up throughout the trip. But as far as accommodations, I do have to plan that. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, do you usually travel solo or do you sometimes meet someone uh, somewhere? Yeah, so I always travel with a companion. Um, I do need assistance when I'm traveling, yeah. whether that, like, you know, transferring from my wheelchair into bed or 
getting showered or getting around the city or whatever it may be. So um, a million different scenarios, but I do always travel with someone. So that's another thing that I think holds a lot of wheelchair users back from traveling because it can really be like cost prohibitive because yeah. not only are you having to pay for yourself, but you're also having to pay for a care attendant that's going to be joining you. And so um, that's part of the reason uh, why I launched my nonprofit foundation earlier this year, the Curb Free Foundation. Um, and so with the Curb Free Foundation, wheelchair users can go on the website. It's at thecurbfreefoundation.com. And they can fill out a form of what, whatever their dream destination is. And um, we will cover the entire trip for them um, through donations and funding for them and their care attendants. So I'm hoping wow. that that'll wheelchair users to travel that maybe never had the opportunity to before. That's amazing. Uh, can we just repeat all of those details <laughs> for everyone watching? Yes. So wow. the curbfreefoundation.com, did you say? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the curbfreefoundation.com. So if you are a wheelchair user, just fill out the form on there. Let us know where you want to travel, why you want to go there. And then uh, we'll be picking. We actually have not picked anyone yet. We're in the process of going through all of the applications right now. But uh, we will be selecting the first recipients very, very soon. So definitely get your application. <laughs> This is amazing. I'm telling everyone I know about this. I'm telling all the travelers that I know and saying, you know, how much we love to travel. And it's about making these types of things even more accessible than the fact that it's, you know, for finances in that respect. And for that to be the reason that people can't explore just feels yeah. really frustrating. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be shouting that one out. Don't you worry, Corey. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, another question. So what do you look at when you book a destination or, for example, a hotel when you're traveling with a wheelchair? Yeah, I mean, I think that the number one thing, whenever I'm starting to plan a trip, um, I start by researching transportation within the destination. Because yeah. if I, you know, fly to a destination and then I get there, but there isn't an accessible taxi or the public transportation system isn't accessible, then I'm just going to be sitting there in the airport and stuck at the airport, unable to leave. So yeah. uh, transportation is definitely the most important thing to research in advance, just to be sure that they do have some level of accessible transportation for me to be able to move around the city while I'm there. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So interesting to learn more about this because I don't think we have a lot of knowledge. No, and I guess it's something, you know, it, it highlights a blind spot and I'm sure there's mm. many people watching um, today who will be sort of thinking and reconsidering about how, you know, we personally travel and mm. also the privilege we have in the type of travel that yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really interesting. But I guess it's one of these things that for us, you know, who maybe don't have to make those considerations, but also reaching out to spaces and saying, have you considered, like, I think we have a responsibility for certain places that we stay in um, and countries that we go to, to kind of ask the question, like, this is an amazing hotel, but when I leave my, when I leave you my review on TripAdvisor, I'm also going to mention that actually it wasn't very wheelchair accessible. You know, it's not relevant to me, but it's something you should consider for, for, the, for your location. Um, because I think that that's the way that we can kind of get things moving is understanding that it may not benefit me specifically, but it will benefit somebody else. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really good point that you mentioned is that like people that are watching that are able-bodied and don't use the wheelchair, just simply asking, like when you go to a hotel or you go to an attraction or wherever you are in the travel process, just asking about accessibility can really mm -hmm. be a game changer. So, I mean, a lot of places that I go to, um, it may be the first time that they've ever really seen a wheelchair user or yeah. that they even, they maybe have never even thought about accessibility. And so just by asking that, you could be like sparking an idea inside their head and get them thinking like, well, maybe we should yeah. add a ramp, you know, at the entrance, or maybe we could get an elevator or, whatever it is. So, um, I mean, I really appreciate you doing that and um, mm -hmm. just simply asking and leaving it also on TripAdvisor reviews and things like that is yeah. such a good resource because, I mean, there is still even, you know, my blog started over eight years ago and there's still not a lot of resources out mm -hmm. there 
for accessible travel. I mean, with a lot of destinations, it's really hard for me to find out about accessibility. So the more information that is out there, the better it is for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I guess it's like, you know, just because you have an accessible toilet does not mean your entire right. establishment <laughs> is accessible, right? And I think right. oh, yeah. some places think that's, that that's enough. <laughs> when, we, when we got married, we looked into accessibility oh, yeah. for my grandma. Um, and they were like, yeah, we have a room and it's very accessible, but the whole property around it is not accessible. It's all, it was all cobblestone. So actually, yeah. like, um, so yeah, that's so true. Yeah. 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 more than yeah, I, I, I always say that the word accessible, like it means something different to everyone with a disability. So yeah, just because, yeah. you know, something is accessible for me, I use a powered wheelchair to get around. It may not be accessible for someone that uses a manual chair or yeah. someone that uses a scooter or a walking cane or someone that's blind or hard of hearing or whatever yeah. their disability yeah. is. So it's really important, I think, to just realize, you know, that the word accessible, it means something different for everyone. And so when you are speaking about accessibility and writing about accessibility, just be as specific as you can be, I think. Yeah, that's such a good point as well. Um, really good. I see that in the work I do about, you know, what are we defining as accessibility? Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Uh, I just yeah. want to just remind people that you can ask questions. So please, Jen is oh, keeping yeah. an eye out for questions in the comments. We do still have a few more to go, but please take the opportunity to ask Corey questions whilst we're here. Um, you can either put them in the comments or you can use the handy question button on Instagram Live, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, I have to ask, what has been your favorite destination so far? Mm -hmm. You've mentioned 39 countries. So is there a favorite? favorite? Which is it? Uh, I knew you guys would ask this, and it's always so hard for me to like pick one. But um, if I had to pick, I'll, I'll say two, a top two. Um, I would choose Morocco and Ooh. India. Um, so <gasps> both of those are places that I really never thought that I would be able to go to. I right. did not think that they would be accessible at all. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually got there, I was like pleasantly surprised and went with tour companies that specialize in accessibility to both Morocco and India. So um, it was just like, those were the most incredible trips of all time. They blew my mind and um, it was just like the most incredible time ever. So that's uh, yeah, so amazing. I can't, yeah, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> that's so interesting because when I think about countries like accessibility, you think about Western countries. So yeah. maybe India, yeah. Morocco wouldn't be so high up on my list, but that's yeah. great to hear and to know and to share with people. Wow, that's so yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say they're like the most accessible. But no, no, okay, but, but the, the fact the that it's fun. Yeah. 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 Just possible. We've just had someone put from love from India, most welcome. So oh, I have nice. someone mm -hmm. writing from India, which is amazing. And awesome. I think it's, it's that as well. Like the perception is one thing, but actually when you take the time to sort of delve in and explore, then you can be pleasantly surprised by, I mean, I haven't even been to India yet. Well done. That's oh, on my bucket nice. list. <laughs> Yeah, you, you've got to go there. Have you been to Morocco yet? Yeah, I've been you to have. both. I've I been to both. Um, yeah, my experience was a bit different, but I was also very young, uh, so I think I need to go back. Yeah. Yay, yeah. we get to yeah. go back. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> you just helped us get back in to, to go awesome. to India. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you say, what would you say is the most, most accessible country that you visited outside, I guess, of the US? Because we can't count that right yeah. now. We're traveling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I wouldn't even say that the U.S. is the most accessible, honestly. I think that the most accessible is probably, I had a really good experience in Australia. Um, I think Sydney, Australia is probably the most accessible city in the world. Um, so every mode of public transportation was accessible. Every attraction, restaurant, I mean, everything that I wanted to do while I was there was completely wheelchair accessible, which was like amazing. And I felt like I had so much freedom and like independence from that, from just being able to do everything that I really wanted to do. So that feeling was like amazing. And um, I've experienced that in a few places though. So I think that Barcelona is also one of the best in the world. The, their beaches are phenomenally accessible. So they have like, beach wheelchairs, beach access mats, accessible wow. changing rooms. 
Um, so I'm like itching to go back to Barcelona and cannot wait to go back there. That's so amazing. That's a wicked destination. Yeah. Yes, Barcelona. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll meet you there. We'll meet you <laughs> in Barcelona. Okay. Or is I'm ready. It's not, so far it's us. not that far for us. No. It's like a hop, skip, and a jump um, over to Barcelona. Not that challenging. Yeah. We, we let, after, when this ends, let's just go on Skyscanner, <laughs> look for like the cheapest flights, and let's just go. Yeah, <laughs> literally, that it is that <laughs> simple. Let's, let's do that. Um, Jen can join us too. Um, yes, please. Before we go into our final, I have another question. Oh, great, great. Sorry, great. So I'm just really curious because uh, we're now in London, uh, but I'm from Amsterdam. Have you been to London and or Amsterdam? Yeah, I've been to both London and Amsterdam, and I had a really good experience in both. So okay. in London, I really loved it because all of the black cabs had a ramp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like super easy to get around, although they are a bit expensive. But yeah, um, the, the convenience though is like totally worth it. Just to be able to like hail a cab on the street, you know, is so convenient. And then in Amsterdam. There is a really good tour company that I use called Accessible Travel Netherlands. And they planned out like the entire itinerary. They had accessible buses to be able to get around. And um, I mean, there, Amsterdam was, I would say, a little more difficult than London to get around. Yeah. But um, luckily in Amsterdam, like with all of the bikes, there are cur curb cuts everywhere. So um, that really helped out a lot. So I mean, a city that's built for bikes is yeah. more, more wheelchair accessible than a lot of cities. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking because in London, obviously, you know, we have an incredible tube network and underground system, but I am very aware just from being there with a friend with a wheelchair, with a pushchair for children, right? Yeah. How challenging it can be in terms of you know, it's every five or six stations that are wheelchair accessible. So I know that our underground so system isn't amazing for that. Um, but yes, the, the the black cab, the good old black cab, um, yeah. they are all wheelchair accessible and our buses are pretty good as well. Um, oh, nice. Good yeah. to know. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't even like attempt the underground because I just, I heard from so many other wheelchair users. It's overrated. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 was, I was scared to try it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's intense anyway, especially <laughs> yeah. at rush hour. It's not really yeah. the best place to be in the world. But um, yeah, I can imagine that on top of being, like having to navigate which station actually has an elevator or a lift mm -hmm. and everything else is also just, just jump in a cab. Mm -hmm. It's far more London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's London like... and uh, New York City are actually a lot of like, I think, because... In New York, it's kind of the same scenario yeah. where the the subway is not accessible. I mean, only every other subway station is accessible or something. So very poor accessibility, but there are a ton of accessible taxis yeah. in New York. So, um, I mean, and accessibility is, I think, constantly improving also. So just because, you know, something isn't accessible now, it doesn't mean that it won't be like five years from now or 10 years from now. So... Um, I'm not losing hope that one day the New York subway and the London Underground will become accessible. So I think we just have to keep pushing for change, you know. Absolutely. So one day. <laughs> I mean, we've just had a new line built, the Elizabeth line, which opens next week. And I believe, I need to double check, but I believe almost, if not all of those stations they have made accessible, oh. accessible oh. because it is brand new so yeah. i blimmin well hope so because otherwise knock 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 yeah. i'm knocking on uh, the queen's front door <laughs> at buckingham palace and saying what are you doing with your new line you didn't make it accessible <laughs> right yeah hopefully so please let me know like once you try it out let me know if it really is so yeah hopefully. i definitely will i will too um what does the travel industry would you say need to do as a whole to make travel itself more accessible uh, I mean, a lot. <laughs> the list uh, is endless, I know. <laughs> Pick a few. <laughs> I know. But uh, I, mean, I think that the easiest thing to do at this point is to really just like, if you work for a destination um, or for any company, put accessibility information on your website. So, I mean, frequently or every time that I travel to a new destination, like if I'm going to London, let's say, then I usually start researching by going to like visitlondon.com or whatever the main website is. And I mean, far too little, there is not information on the website 
about accessibility. And so they're really missing a golden opportunity there. And also even, I mean, for restaurants also or individual attractions, um, just mentioning on the website, if you are accessible, how accessible is it, you know, that can really be helpful in the planning process. And it's so easy to do to just simply like update your website to include that, include that information. So and that's it uh, where so I'm... much time, right? When, when the information is there, you don't have to research yeah. and call and yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's nothing I hate more than what having to call up a business and yeah. Yeah. question about accessibility. So it's so much easier to just hop online, go to their website and, you know, it say on there how accessible it is. And I guess that's, again, something that we can all do, like the amount of times we call up a venue to ask, can we bring a dog? Or is there vegan yeah. food? Or is there vegan food? Right. We're already calling you anyway to find out those two things. So right. we might as well also ask, and also are you wheelchair accessible? Is it possible um, uh, to, to access your space? Mm -hmm. um, just add it to the list of questions. We're vegans with a dog that want to know about wheelchairs. Right. <laughs> And they should put that information on their website too. I mean, why not put if right. you know our vegan offerings or if dogs are allowed, how accessible it is, it is yeah. it. So I mean it's so easy to put on the website, but a lot of places don't do it unfortunately. But yeah, no, hopefully absolutely. one day. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna hand over and see if Jen, if there are any any questions that have come in that um yes. you should highlight. Let me just grab them. I've been making notes uh throughout this because some of them <laughs> have come through in the actual comment section. Which is, yeah. which is awesome. Um, so I've got two that aren't questions, but I just want, I want to say them anyway, because they're really oh. nice. Um, so Corey, I love your excitement for travel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one that I have to mention is not a question, but the Curb Free Foundation sounds amazing. What a brilliant initiative. So oh, again, people are loving that. Um, we're going to make sure you pitch that again at the end. Uh, that's super <laughs> important. Um, and the other questions that came through, uh, what are the best destinations for accessibility that you have been to? Uh, the best destinations for accessibility, I mean, aside from, I, I guess aside from the ones I've already mentioned, like Sydney and Barcelona, I would really say Scandinavia and Europe oh. it was phenomenal. So, I mean, I went to Helsinki, Finland a few years ago, and I did not expect it to be super accessible due to like, it being very old and a lot of cobblestone in certain areas. But when I got there, I discovered that there are actually over 300 wheelchair accessible taxis in Helsinki. Oh. So that was really a pleasant surprise for me to find out. And um, ever since then, I think I went in 2016 for the first time. And I've been back a couple more times since then. And I just love that whole area of Scandinavia. Oh, that's really good. And I guess that's something that you quite often, I know that London falls prey to that when you have these older cities, mm. listed buildings, you're not allowed to just knock through and put a, a lift <laughs> in the middle of them. So that I know that that's also a challenge in summer, certainly in, in Europe, where we have very old, old history, um, and lots of cobblestones everywhere that I know that can be a challenge. So that's amazing to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some places in Europe with, like, brutal cobblestone. I mean, I went <laughs> to Estonia um, a few years ago, and the cobblestone there is, like, I mean, I needed to, like, go see a chiropractor when I was done with that trip. <laughs> I was, like, oh, no. I did not bring me around so much. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I had, like, a phenomenal time, and it's, like, a beautiful country. So, um, I mean, I would still recommend it, but it's just a lot of cobblestone. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take your heels either if you are. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned earlier on about Australia and, and how, how much you enjoyed your time over there. There has some have been someone asked, uh, where did you actually go in Australia? I think we'd just like to know oh. a bit more about, about that. Yeah. One. Yeah, I went to Sydney and Melbourne. Um and so and also did the Great Ocean Road, so like a driving tour of the Great Ocean Road from Melbourne. And so, I mean, everywhere that I went, I mean, in both Sydney and Melbourne were phenomenally accessible. So, I mean, they were, I really, I like Sydney better probably if I can only like recommend one place, but Melbourne also was just a beautiful city and super, super accessible. The public transportation system, like the Metro was really easy to use as a wheelchair user. And um, I stayed in a really great hotel there that was fully accessible. So. 
I would highly recommend both cities and I can't wait to get back to Australia and see a lot more because I mean, it's a huge country and there's so much to see. Giant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Australia. Amazing. Um, oh, I managed to switch it to a Q and A, so we're, yeah. we're, we're doing well so far. Um, cool. This is a, a question that should come in. Um, what country has surprised you the most in terms of being accessible, and what was particularly good about it? Ah, uh, surprised me the most. I mean, I'm gonna say Finland again. It was just. I don't know. I just did not expect it to be accessible at all. And then when I got there, I was just like so shocked and surprised with like how super, super wheelchair friendly it is. And so um, I'm going to say that again, but I also want to say Buenos Aires, Argentina. I think Argentina, I mean, there are a lot of parts of Argentina that don't have great accessibility, but Buenos Aires was just like such a fun place to like, drink wine like see a tango show like <laughs> explore the downtown area like there's so much to do there yeah you've got to go you have got to go if you have not been already so it's a beautiful beautiful city it really gives also a bit of that european vibe i don't know if you yeah. noticed that as well yeah oh yeah photo. definitely you um, name in all the places you've been to. I know, I'm getting so excited. <laughs> so I actually have a question for you. What is your favorite thing to do when you travel? Is it that you like all about the food? Is it about the sightseeing, the history? Like what is your like favorite go-to things when you go traveling? Uh, I usually love any kind of like outdoor activities. So I'm a huge fan of the outdoors, whether that's like beaches or national parks. Um, and so I always try to find some kind of like really cool outdoor experience to enjoy and I'm also a big fan of adventure also so I've gone hot air ballooning I've gone water skiing I've done zip lining um, all kinds of like adaptive adventure experiences I yeah. think um, are really such a unique thing to do as a wheelchair user and it's something that I really enjoy. Zip lining is a great one especially when you can do it like through a jungle Oh, However yeah. many hundreds of meters long is like the best experience. We love a bit. Yeah, I went zip lining. Um, I've gone twice now in Orlando, Florida. Okay. Um, so I did it at a gator land and I like zip lined over a lake full of gators. And so it, like I could see the gators below me and I was like terrified, but it's, <laughs> it's so much fun. Such an adrenaline adrenaline rush. Oh wow. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, man. let's do it. Basically, giving this pair a whole bunch of new trip ideas. Um, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all for we we're all for we straight on guys. And after this booking flight to go to Orlando, but it's there is India, Morocco, all of them, all of them. Um, I love it. <laughs> thank you. I don't know if we have any more questions left, Jen. Is that we do? Oh, we, we do. do. Um, next one. What sort of planning resources do you find the most helpful? Uh, so, I mean, I think getting that first-hand perspective from other wheelchair users is the most important thing. So um, when I'm traveling, I consult other like, wheelchair travel blogs um, or even Facebook groups. I think there are some really good groups. One of them that I'm a huge fan of is called Accessible Travel Club, and it's on Facebook. And so anytime I have a question about accessibility in a particular destination, I'll just like post in that group and usually somebody in that group has like been there, done that and has some insight and some insight. So it's uh, super valuable. Uh, that's good to know. I'm going to start checking it out. Is that an open group or a private group? Uh, it's, I actually have no idea. I don't know. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. Accessible travel. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can definitely request to join it. There's like over 12,000 members in wow. it. Um, it's a huge group, and I mean, every time I post, like somebody has been there and has some really good insight. So definitely join the group, even if you're. I mean, you guys could join it just to get some insight about accessibility. Yeah. I think yeah. it's yeah. Awesome. Great, great information. Cool. We have another. Oh, hold on, I managed to break this. This is going well. <laughs> yeah. um, where did it go? Everything just moved around. And um, let's go with this one. Um. What destinations are on your bucket list? Oh, oh that's a good question. <laughs> uh, every, every time I check something off, I add like three new things to the bucket list. But I would say at the top are Egypt, um, Japan, which I'm going to in July as long as the country reopens. Right. Um, so hopefully in July I'll be going there. 
And um, so, yeah, I would say Egypt and Japan are like my top two that I really, really, really want to go to one day. So that'll be countries up to 41 by that point, right? Yeah, yeah, 41. Yeah, <laughs> trying to hit 50. <laughs> I think you're going to do it. You're fast approaching it. I think I, yeah, I think it's, it's going to happen. We're actually, I think I'm on 41. So we can do sort of oh. like a challenge. <laughs> Steps to Let's 50, travel oh, yeah. to 50. Okay. First, first one to 50. Let's yeah, okay. The competition is set. <laughs> it's there, the okay. Officially, first to 50. <laughs> what do you win? Do, do, we, do we win anything? Uh, I don't know. I don't Are you know. Glory? What, what, what? A flight from Skyscanner? Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. We yeah. actually have another one from. Oh, why is this one not working? Right, this one refuses to show up, uh, which is really. Let's see what I can do now. Um, either way, the question is what more could the travel industry do to support travelers with accessibility needs? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, as I said earlier, like putting the information on your website, but also, I mean, I think anyone watching today can. Um, sorry, I'm like getting text messages if it's like making a noise. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyone watching today, just like inquiring about accessibility when you travel um, is super important. Um, or also, um, if you are a travel blogger, um, like breaking the distance. I mean, just putting, you know, if you're doing a review about a destination, just putting one simple like sentence or paragraph within the article saying, you know, what accessibility you noticed within that destination. Yeah is super helpful because I think just the more information that is out there on the internet, the better it is. So I really want to see a world where like every website that I go to that pertains to travel has some degree of accessible travel information on it because I mean, the accessible travel market is huge. I mean, people, with disabilities, yeah, people with disabilities spend over $58 billion per year just on travel. So the market is there, like people with disabilities want to travel, um, if we just are given the opportunity and the accessibility to do so. Mm. And you also consider, like you were saying, odds are like a percentage of, of those travelers are also traveling with some form of a companion as well. So <laughs> it's actually like, it's not just that it's one person that we're accounting for, it's yep. two, maybe three people that are actually traveling together. So from a business perspective, yeah. Some business sense <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> to make your space yeah. accessible. Um, yeah, definitely make it from a business perspective because I mean, if the family of eight people are planning like a reunion or a trip, you know, and they they have one member of the family of eight is in a wheelchair, yeah, uh, they're going to have to go to a wheelchair accessible destination. Yeah, yeah. so you're running out on a ton of money if you're not being accessible and inclusive, and so. Um, yeah, just super important. That's such good advice. Um, Amazing point. Uh, Egypt, something about the boats. I just saw that comment pop up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boats cruise down the Nile River, a semi-accessible, cool, sunny land tours. They treated me like royalty. There we oh, go. There's a little, nice. a little insider information for you, Corey. Yeah, sunny that's land really tours good. in Egypt are the way to go, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love a cruise and I would love to go to Egypt. So I, I'm up for it. Check and Double check. Mm -hmm. um, we still have we... questions coming in. So wow. we'll be here for a while. Um, what's the best <laughs> and worst thing for you in terms of air travel? Oh, uh, it's hard for me, <laughs> hard for me to make this because there's, uh, the air travel industry, it could use a lot of work, I think. But um, my ultimate dream is like to be able to actually get on the plane and stay in my wheelchair, just like I can on a bus or in a taxi, you know. So um, there's a wonderful group called All Wheels Up. They're a nonprofit organization based here in the U.S. And they are working and like trying to pass legislation where airplanes would be accessible and you would be able to just like roll on the plane in your wheelchair. So I'm constantly worried Whenever I'm flying, you know, is my wheelchair going to be yeah. damaged during yeah. fly? And frequently it is damaged, um, which is terrible. Uh, but it's a constant issue that I have, like, in the back of my mind throughout the flight. And so just being able to, you know, like, stay in my wheelchair would be a total game changer. And I know, like, I travel a lot now, but 
if I could stay in that wheelchair, I would like never be home again. I would be in the air. <laughs> Where's Corey? He's on a plane. He's on a flight. Right. <laughs> on a plane. Always. Every day. <laughs> That's such a good point. Yeah. I mean, I feel the same way too. I get worried about my case let alone like oh. something that is you know it's the so other part good. of me in terms of how i maneuver around yeah. like right. no one no one would feel comfortable putting their phone in the hold right and that's like right. an extension of hand for some people so yeah yeah, I mean, yeah yeah that's what i always say like the wheelchair is an extension of my body yeah so i mean if it gets damaged i mean i can enjoy the trip i mean that would be the same as you know you guys, like the, the flight attendant coming down the aisle and like breaking your arms or something. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it would be terrible and like it would be all over the news. But when it happens to a wheelchair, it's just like looked over, glossed over, and not a whole lot is done with it. So um, I think the air travel industry could definitely get better. Um, but I mean, I'm still going to be flying, still going to be having a good time. Not holding the bag. Not going to stop me, but it could definitely use some improvements. Amazing. Um, well, I think I know that there's probably loads more questions, but I'm actually going to encourage people to come to you directly. So if they want to, if they want to ask questions, you, go, you have to go to Corey, you have to follow him, and then you get to ask your questions too. Um, but I also want you to have the opportunity to share once again about the foundation, um, so we can top and tail this. If you've missed the beginning, you get to hear it now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to send me a message here on Instagram. I'm at Curb Free Corey Lee. Uh, but um, as uh, you were mentioning, my nonprofit organization is the Curb Free Foundation. You can go to the curbfreefoundation.com. And if you are a wheelchair user or know a wheelchair user, definitely encourage them to apply. And you can apply, just fill out the form on the website with uh, what dream trip you wanna go on. It can be to anywhere in the world um and why you want to go there and so the curb free foundation will cover the entire trip from flights to hotels transportation activities everything while you're there so um we're starting to go through the applications now and picking our first winners um so definitely hurry and get your applications in uh within the next couple of weeks and uh we look forward to reading it so yeah, thanks so much. Amazing. Please make awesome. sure you send us the winners so we can also do a shout out to the winners once they're announced as well. Oh, I will. Um, yeah, yeah. And see where, what magical place they'll be going to. I know. I, I've, I've been like reading through the applications and there are like so many amazing like destinations that people want to go to. And it's just like, it's overwhelming to see how many people want to travel. You know, I mean, when we announced the foundation back in February, and within 24 hours of announcing it, we had over 200 applications come in. And so the demand is like there, like people, or wheelchair users, I mean, they want to travel if they have the opportunity. And so it's really just, so, I think, such an incredible opportunity. And also, I mean, if, if you aren't a wheelchair user, we are complete, we run on donations completely. So if you have the means, feel free to donate and all of the funds go toward um, sending wheelchair users on their dream trips. So yeah, thank you. So, thank you so much for letting me talk about it today. I really appreciate uh, it. Of course, of course. Of course. It's, it's, it's amazing. This has been it's absolutely amazing. wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing those like those details on your foundation and giving us all those tips. Um, I'm 100% going to start hounding hotels um, <laughs> for information. <laughs> For thank you, any thank reviews. You. and i'll let you know um, as any information comes through um if anyone missed any of this we're gonna save it so it exists on forever it will be in our little videos tab please make sure to check that out and make sure you give this i don't know where i am on the screen so these guys um a follow um and keep an eye on them and we'll i'm so excited to see how the foundation goes um thank you so much for joining us and it's been yeah, thank, thank you, so you Corey. thank you yeah, so thank much you. So good thank to meet you, you. And uh, cool. have a great rest of your day wherever you are. <laughs>